In that hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses His servants, His slaves, us. And gives us many instructions. And gives us an inform- um, a large amount of information in a few words. In one of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that all oh my slaves, if all of you come together, the first of you and the last of you. In some of the rawayat, this includes in insul jinn, yani man and jinn, all of those that are the ibad of Allah, if everybody comes together and tries to benefit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you cannot benefit Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you cannot benefit me. And if all of you, the first of you and the last of you, the insan, the jinn, all of you come together to harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you cannot harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, think about this hadith. Or at least this, this portion of the hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not need to create us. He doesn't need our ibadah. This is not one of those Greek mythology where if you don't worship, then the God doesn't exist. No, la'udhu billah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not need to put any rules on us. Meaning if none of us made salah, none of us made hajj, none of us fasted Ramadan, none of us gave zakat, none of us gave sadaqah, none, no woman wore the hijab or, yani, or khimar or niqab or any of that and no man had beards or went for yani, uh, any juhud lillahi subhanahu If none of that happened, it would not benefit or harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And his kingdom subhanahu wa ta'ala would be the same. Think about that. But out of that mercy, that love for us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this great opportunity we call life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with His own hands made Al Jannah for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then out of love for us. He made rules and regulations for us to, one, be able to live with each other in harmony, in peace. If stealing wasn't haram and people kept stealing from each other, what would happen? You would have problems. If you didn't have the tahrim of riba, what would happen as is happening from those who don't follow the sharia? Zulam. If Allah didn't make zulam, oppression, haram, then everybody, even the religious man, would make zulam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made these ahkam with first the hikmah of how we can live with each other in peace. Second, there is many hikam, I'm just going to mention a couple. Second, to make us from those that are pure so we can enter the place of purity. So we can take off anything from sins and mistakes and, and oppression and taking the hukuk of ibad and so on. So with these ahkam, with salah and dua and with these, with fasting and Ramadan and Jum'ah to the next Jum'ah and Sadaqah and Sadaqah Jari and all these things, we purify ourselves so that we can enter Al-Jannah because Jannah is a place for those that have Qalbun Salim yani the, the Qalb, the heart that is pure, Salim, whole and one of those aspects is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained upon us Ahkam of Sharia as a mercy on us and I'm mentioning this because Today, I see my community. I see my brothers and sisters in San Diego, in California, in America, in the West, and around the world. This is all my community. I don't care what race you are. I don't care what color skin you have. I don't care what language you speak. I don't care what financial background you come from. I don't care which family you come from. If you are a person of La ilaha illallah, 
then you are my brothers and sisters. If you are a person of Muhammad Rasulullah, then you are my people. This is my people. So when I see a, 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 a fitna coming to my people, I have to address it. So one of the fitna we see now is people either questioning or denying certain things that are in the Sharia. Do you think these things harm Allah? La. Who do they harm? They harm us as a society, us as humanity. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made something haram, Wallahi, we don't have the right to question.